Inigo Lopez de Loya was born in a small town called Espitia at the castle of Loyola in Spain. His parents, Don Butran and Donna Marina, had a big family of 13 kids, of which Inigo was the youngest. Sadly, his mother Donna soon died after his birth, and a young Inigo was put in the care of Maria de Garden, the local blacksmith's wife, who brought him up. As young Inigo grew up, he developed a strong interest in military exercises and was driven by a desire for fame. He read stories of hero knights who conquered the enemies and received wealth and women. At just 17 years old, he joined the army and at least according to one writer, he was a fancy dresser, an expert dancer, a womanizer, sensitive to insults and a rough punkish swordsman who used his privileged status to escape prosecution for violent crimes committed with his priest brother at carnival time. One year after joining the army, he took up arms for military leader Antonio Manrique. Inigo was good at what he did and what he had dreamed to be all his life, so much so that he earned himself the title Servant of the Court. He participated in many battles over 12 years, but in May 1521, at the Battle of Pamplona, this would be his last. He was severely injured when in battle, a cannonball ricketed off a nearby wall and shattered his right leg. Straight away, he underwent harsh and multiple surgeries to repair his leg, with his bones set and rebroken. After the operations, his right leg was left shorter than his left leg, resulting in a limp he would have for the rest of his life. This time was rough on Ignatius's body, but it transformed his spiritual life. He had no books on knights or romances to read during this time, so he moved his attention to religious texts on the life of Jesus and on the lives of the saints. These books slowly changed his desires away from battles, romance and fame, to a life of prayer, meditation and penance. He discovered that his dream of romantic heroism would only leave him dissatisfied, but his goal of being a saint would bring him joy and peace. Once recovered from his harsh operations, he decided to change his entire life. He examined his past sins, confessed, gave away his opulent clothes to the poor he met, exchanged it for garments of sackcloth, then he hung his sword and dagger at the virgin's altar. He changed his way of life completely. He lived in a town called Montserrat for about a year, begging for his keep. For a couple of months, he spent much time praying in a cave nearby, doing penances, praying for seven hours a day, and developing the fundamentals of his spiritual exercises. He then spent a number of years studying and growing his understanding in the faith. He went to the University of Paris where he gained his magisterium at the age of 43, and it was here where Ignatius made two very important friendships. Francis Xavier and Peter Faber, two Portuguese students who would later become his close associates in helping him form the Jesuit order. In 1539, along with his two close friends, Ignatius formed the Society of Jesus, now known as the Jesuits, which was approved by Pope Paul III in 1540. Ignatius sent those in his order on missions across Europe to create schools, colleges, and seminaries. He wrote in a letter to Francis Xavier a Latin phrase, et inflamit omnia, meaning, go set the world on fire. And they did this with the growth of their order. The order stressed absolute self-denial and obedience to the Pope and to the superiors in the church hierarchy. This was summarized in the motto perende ac cadivia, as if a dead body, complete self-denial. On the 31st of July, 1556, Ignatius of Loyola's life on earth came to an end, probably a result of the Roman fever, but we are not certain on that. A man who originally wanted to follow his own desires for fame, for war, for fortune, for power, but in the end dedicated his life to God's, not his own, will.